Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we're going to be looking at something a little bit different. We're looking at a game programming language called Ink. Now technically this is actually a narrative scripting language for games. So if you're doing game dialogue, branching dialogue, that kind of thing, this is a programming language for that, but also an entire ecosystem. So it's a set of tools, and then we've got game engine integration. So we've got, you can run this inside of Unity, you can run it in Godot, you can run it in your own custom game engine, and as we will see shortly, you can actually run it in Unreal Engine as well. You can see a simple example of Ink. It looks a lot like Markdown, uh, but we'll get back to it in just a minute. So they did receive an Epic Mega Grant, which is pretty cool. Uh, so you see here, there's different pieces of it. We'll look at all of that in this video. It is an open source project under the MIT license, there is Unity integration. There is a sample game. We'll look at the source code for this guy in just a second so you get an idea of what Ink looks like. Uh, and they have a Discord server. So if you've got some questions or comments or whatever, I will have a link to all of that stuff down below. So let's go jump through the Ink ecosystem. So first off, there is a company called Inkle. Inkle is the owner of Ink, I guess you could say. They've used Ink to make a number of their games. You can see a variety of them on screen right now. Of all of these, the only one I've actually played is Sorcery. Uh, it's sort of like an interactive novel slash role-playing game. It's available on various different mobile platforms and on Steam as well. Uh, but they made all of these games. Plus, they make a tool called Inkle Writer for working with Ink. So these are kind of like the caretakers of Ink who obviously use it for their own projects as well. But there is more to it than that. As I mentioned earlier on, there is this demo game out there, or demo project kind of shows you how Ink works, and you can see the Ink language being implemented here, and you've got a couple things going on. So you've got the ability to create variables. You've got the ability to create constants. You've got the ability to create, um, it looks like a macro right there. You can do functions that get called in here, uh, and then you've got your story, and your story basically jumps into, you've got um, jump points, like go-to statement almost labels here. So at the starting point, you would come in here, you got your thing down here, your options, you split through, and depending on what you pick, you've got different logic that comes down here. Uh, you can have uh, various different conditions on how things go. So here, for example, if the person is not missing the reel, then this will particular happen. So a lot of times in, in a game, obviously, you'll have branching based off of conditions happen. So if you're holding the sort of rodent slaying, the rat king will treat you different. That kind of thing. All of it can be handled in the ink logic. If you've never seen anything like this before, it's very, very similar to Markdown. And the good news is you don't have to work at this level. So you don't really have to memorize their exact syntax here. And you can organize things nicely because there are a number of tools out there in the Inkosphere to, to actually handle writing these for you. But this is what ink, the language, looks like. So it's pretty straightforward. Again, very conditional. You do have variable usage and variable conditions in here. You can call functions. You do have variables and constants, etc., to work with. It's just a nice streamlined programming language. And obviously, there are hosts out there. So if you're working in the Godot game engine, you can map it back to native variables inside of your engine. So if you had to do some graphics that displayed based off of something that happened in dialogue, you you could easily do so. So this is an example of Ink in action. Uh, we also have a, a couple different projects going on here. The heart of everything is Ink itself. So this is the programming language. Uh, it is under the MIT code license. The co source code itself is 99% C sharp. I'm curious what that other percent is. Probably configuration files and text files. So this is basically a C sharp project behind the scenes. But truth of the matter is, you probably won't work with ink. You'll work with the ink language, but the ink compiler and tool chain and all that stuff, generally you'll use an implementation of ink. So you probably won't work at this level, same way as you might write code in C++ or C Sharp, but you don't actually use C++ or C Sharp. You're not at that level. You're using them. You're not changing them. So you probably won't work at this particular level. Instead, what you'll probably work at is an engine integration and then a tool like this. So there's also an open source engine called Inky that works with Ink. So this is, uh, it uses the Ink uh, programming languages or implements for it. But here you can see you've got uh, the markdown writing on the on the left and then a preview of how it actually looks on the right. If you've done markdown editing in Visual Studio Code, you've got an idea of what's going on there. By the way, if you'd rather work in Visual Studio Code, there is actually an ink implementation in Visual Studio Code as well for writing there and a number of other ones. But basically you can play your game as you write it. It does have syntax highlighting. It's got error handling as you write uh, and jump to the definitions throughout. Supports multi-file projects, etc. So uh, you've got, uh, again, this editor is available called Inky. It's available on most major platforms, so you can download it for Windows, Mac, and Linux. Again, it is an MIT project. On top of that, they make a product called Inkle Writer. Uh, so this is uh, an online editor that you can use uh, to actually write Inkle. 
uh, directly inside. So we're in read mode right now. You want to go to write, you can write it that way. So you can do it this way in these cards and use the logic and the branching and do all those things like the links and setup. You can write entirely in Inkle Writer as well. So if you don't want to run, write, or download Inkle, uh, Inkle Writer is a browser based option that they have available as well. So this is uh, a tool that's out there. Also, you can see a top level narrative map of how everything goes, which is, again, a pretty cool tool uh, there. Uh, so that is part of the ecosystem that's out there. Uh, but there is this project out there called the Ink Library. It kind of runs down all of the other stuff out there. And to give you an idea, again, there is the official Unity integration. There's JavaScript, there's Godot, there's a GD script port of Ink for Godot. If you want to have it native inside of the Godot engine, not as a plugin, uh, you do have this option available as well. You've got one for uh, Blade Coder, which is a Java project I covered years ago. Uh, Unreal 4 integration, there's something about 5. We'll get back to that in just a second. There's a CPP or C++ integration. So if you're doing your own game engine and you're working in uh, C++, Kotlin, Hacks, uh, Rust, or so on, there is probably an implementation for you out there. So really, no matter what you are using, there is probably a thing for you. And then on top of that, there are a number of editors out there. There are extensions for other systems, including Emacs, Atom, Visual Studio Code has two of them, although one does appear to be less complete than the other. And then you got a ton of frameworks and tools out there as well. So Ink isn't just a programming language. It is also this full-blown ecosystem for doing narrative development. And then we see here a number of the titles. So Inkle themselves have made a number of different games available here. And then the community has made a number of other things out here. So maybe you have played an Ink title. So one of the ones that really stands out to me is Vampire the Masquerade, the Coteries of New York. That is a game I have definitely played. I don't play a lot of visual novels or narrative fiction stuff, so this isn't really my world, but maybe you recognize something that was created here. And something I was alluding to the entire time through uh, is Inkpot. And this was just released, and the reason why I'm actually covering Ink right now, this is a plugin for Unreal Engine 5.2 that was just released by the Chinese Room. Now, the Chinese Room are a popular, ironically enough, not Chinese, but UK-based game developer, and they've released this plugin for Unreal Engine 5.3 which enables you to do game development with Ink inside of the newest version of Unreal Engine. Now, the interesting part about that is most likely down to the fact that they, the Chinese room, so they've worked on a ton of games in this kind of area. So uh, Dear Esther, Everyone's Gone to the Rapture, and so on. But the one that I find most interesting and probably why this is most relevant is they are currently working on Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2 which is, coincidentally, an Unreal Engine 5.3 title. So I think at this point in time, it is very safe to assume that Ink is being used for uh, Vampire the Masquerade 2. And if you played Vampire the Masquerade 1, it is one of the most narrative-heavy, awesome role-playing games ever made. And if they think that this is the ideal tool for making the follow-up or sequel... Now, this this whole game, its its development has been cursed, not because of uh, Chinese Room. It was started by other developers and then on to other... It's basically our generation's Duke Nukem Forever. But I pray this game comes out, and it does seem like the tool that they are using for all the dialogue in it is Ink which is a pretty big endorsement for this project overall. So uh, if you are looking for alternatives, however, Ink is not the only game in town. I have covered another one, which was called Twine. A very similar system. They have a very similar ecosystem in place as well. Uh, it is for um, branching interactive fiction. I, I think it has a little bit less of the game engine integration. There is Unity and uh, Godot engine uh, implementation for Twine as well. So for some reason, you are looking for a system like this and Ink didn't work out for you. There is also Twine, but I think Ink is a cool choice for this kind of thing. And once again, the fact that the Chinese room seemed to be using it for uh, Vampire Bloodlines 2, that is a pretty big endorsement, especially, you know what I'm talking about if you, pay, if you played the Vampire 1, because again, that was one of the most immersive dialogue-driven games I have ever played. So, uh, yeah, this, ladies and gentlemen, is Ink, a narrative scripting language for games, but it's more so than that. It's an entire ecosystem of tools for writing game dialogue and logic and the branching conditions and the game engine plugins and all of that stuff that you need to make this entire thing work. So if you're writing interactive fiction inside of your game, so if you have NPCs with dialogues and branching conditions, you should probably check out Ink. So let me know what you think. Comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.